All right, welcome to How to Maximize the Value of Your B Corp Certification, a interview series where I talk to internal leaders at various certified B Corps to share tips, tactics, and best practice ideas, best practice ideas about getting more value out of B Corp certification. Um, and in particular, we'll focus on three areas. So first is uh, increasing internal engagement. So how do you work with your employees? Second is uh, increasing external engagement. So customers, investors, suppliers, other stakeholders. And third is increasing your company's B Corp score. So our guest today is Mai Ha, who's the impact manager at Clearinghouse CDFI, which is based in Orange County in Southern California. Mai, welcome to the show. Hi, Ryan. Thank you for having me. I'm very honored to be on your show. Awesome. So my, for folks who don't know, what is Clearinghouse CDFI? So Clearinghouse is a community development lender. And what that means is that we're not quite like a bank, but we do provide loans to help build the low income community. So all of our loans have some kind of impact in the community, whether that means that we're creating jobs with our loans or rehabilitating um, blight or creating student spaces. So every single loan that we provide will create some kind of positive impact in the community. Awesome. And I saw, you know, for the B Corp nerds who are probably watching this, that you originally certified as a B Corp in 2014 or Clearinghouse did. Were you part of that initial certification team? So actually the initial assessment part, I was not. By the time I had arrived, which was right after we got our certification, um, it kind of got handed to me in a way that, you know, was very exciting because it was so new to me. I had no idea what you know, B Corp certification was. So the initial assessment, I was not a part of it, but um, right afterwards we, you know, I got my hands around it. I learned about it from B Corp handbook and was really excited to take it on. And is that, is your role at impact manager, does it focus, like is a heavy percentage of that B Corp specific within your role? Yeah, I would probably say um, now as of today, it's probably about 50% of my work. Um, before when I first started, it was probably a very small portion, and I don't think that we ever intended or expected it to be that big in our company, but I was so inspired um, about the movement that it became more and more part of my work. Awesome. And so, again, sort of for B Corp nerds who are watching this, your company scored 103 points in 2014, which is a really great score. Uh, and then in two years when you recertified, you got to 140 points, which is well into best for the world. Uh, do you know off top of your head or can you list any of the different changes you perhaps made to get that score dramatically up? Right. So when we scored 103, um, it was basically being just who we are, right? When we were first created like 20 years ago, um, because we are always been a double bottom line with mission and profit. Um, getting that score of 103 wasn't that hard, but to get it to 140, we really had to work really hard. Um, and that's when we created the B Corp committee uh, to start looking at the assessment to say, hey, what are some low hanging fruits that we can work on? Um, so some of those things were like looking deeper into our recycling, right? Like, do we actually have recycling bins for everybody? Do we educate everybody on that? Um, what are we doing with our K cups? That was seemed easy, but it was actually quite a bit of research that we had to do because um, you don't only have to think about where it's going, but practically whether or not staff will do it. Um, and then we other, thing, other things like made formal policies, right? So a lot of things that we were already doing, like purchasing locally, but we never had it in a formal policy. And so we started working on those things um, and then formally putting together like volunteer events um, company wide paid by the company, and then also the opportunity to go out and do other types of volunteering that, you know, each individual is excited to do, um, and then request time off for that. Wow, so a lot of different improvements. Yeah, across that. the board, yeah. Right. It's funny you mentioned the K-Cups. That is, people are so resistant to letting those things go. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I think, like, I think Keurig is working on a, a permanent solution um, for their K-Cups, but in the meantime, they've set up a program where you can um, send it back to them and then they will take care of it and they will recycle it. Nice. Yeah. So the, the main thing I wanted to talk to you about, which we discussed 
uh, on our recurring call, our B Corp circle, is this the B Corp committee, because I, you have a really interesting and effective B Corp team, uh, at least from the experience I've had working with companies after certification to, to then think about how do you improve your score. Can you talk to folks a little bit about the original, so when you, when the company took it in 2014, was there already a B Corp committee or was it something that was formed sort of after that certification? All right. So when it was formed after this B Corp certification, um, shortly afterwards, and it was actually after reading the B Corp handbook, um, I forgot what section it was about, but it, it either directly said it like forming some kind of committee or something or um, had implied it. And I think it was like a Friday afternoon and it was kind of slow and I was like, I'm going to read this book. And I think I read it from cover to cover pretty quickly in, a, in one sitting. Um, <clears throat> it just came with this idea that, hey, you know, we're a certified B Corp now and it's, we, did, we had a really great score, but um, true to Clearinghouse and true to B Corp values, like you want to keep getting better, right? You want to be best for the world. So I knew that it was too big of a task for myself to take on. Um, and I also knew that there are other staff members that were really itching to um, think outside the box and to do something really great for the world and, for, you know, for the company. So I was like, you know, I bet you we can get a couple of folks together who feel the same way and then we can start working on these things um, in addition to, you know, what our jobs, our primary jobs are. And so that's kind of where the idea formed and to get to the executive team and they loved it. You know, we, we did have to work around some parameters of like how much time it would take out of people's jobs. But, you know, overall, we understood that the, the idea behind it, getting, you know, employees engaged and empowering them to be the change um, was a good thing for the company and for B Corp certification and the movement. And was the executive team behind the initial certification? Were they all for it or? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it, we initially learned about B Corp certification through one of our um, board members, Dave Levy. And uh, he, from what I have heard, because I wasn't there at the time, he brought it to our attention. And one of our interns actually did a lot of the bulk of the research um, and found that, you know, it's just, who we are and um, it would just be a natural progression for us to join the movement. And so I'm trying to think of the psychology of like, if I'm a person watching this and I'm interested in starting a B Corp team or a more effective B Corp team at my B Corp, what are some of the first steps you'd recommend? Like you, you've maybe certified already, but it's maybe just been you, like one person or a couple people, but you mm -hmm. want to make it sort of more bought into the company. What, like what should people be thinking about in those early stages? Right. So I, so the way that I did it, um, is, uh, I started to float the idea around to folks that I already kind of knew that would be interested or that had that type of mentality already. Um, just to get their ideas and like, Hey, you know, would you be interested in doing something like this? It would probably take about this much time and this is what you'd be doing. Um, just to get their perspective on, on excitement level. Um, and then also to think through any potential challenges or obstacles that the executive team might feel like, you know, this is reasons why we probably can't do that. Um, and then once I got enough, I felt like probably, you know, two to three people that I trusted um, with their, you know, to give me their honest opinion um, and to help me work through some, you know, kinks. Um, I took it to my supervisor, my executive team supervisor, um, and then took it to uh, the CEO. So it was kind of a step-by-step -step process um, to, to get buy-in on every single level. Um, to me, though, I felt like it was important to get buy-in, at least from a select few, from the folks that would be on the committee. Because it could be this great idea and the executive team could be all for it, but then when it comes down to it, no one volunteers to be part of the committee, then you're kind of just out there on your own anyway. So that was the order that I went in. I wonder if, was there any pushback on like, you can do, you know, two hours a month, but anything more than that is like too much or like, how did that sort of play out? So I think there was some concern about like how much work this was going to be. And I, and, 
and, and that's a, a very valid concern, right? Because we could take this to be our full jobs. We really could, because there's just, just a lot that can be done, right? Um, but I, you know, made sure the executive team understood that this is um, in addition to someone's primary job and it will never become more important than our primary job. And it's all volunteer basis. So if at any time they're part of the committee and they feel like they've um, taken on too much, they can pull back or they can even um, step off the team. Uh, and so I've always left that open to each individual staff member to gauge for themselves. Um, and I've had, you know, a couple of members say, hey, you know, I, I don't think this year I can join. I think I have too much on my plate. And that's totally fine. And so, and, you know, they can come and give ideas when they want. It's not like if you're not part of the committee, you can't have any ideas. Um, but I do ask that, like, if you are part of the committee, that you dedicate some time to it. And really how much time depends on um, what you're working on. So for the committee, I have four subsections, right? So that we can be holding ourselves accountable to each, um, to each subsection from the assessment. And so we kind of combine the customer and community section as one. And then we have the workforce and the environment and the governance. So we have two um, staff members per subsection so they can kind of tag team and work together. No one feels overwhelmed with, you know, one job. Um, and then it's, if they pick a, a low hanging fruit, then it could just be, you know, an hour a month um, or less, or maybe just a couple of hours a year. If they choose something that um, is more difficult, then, you know, they're going to be more ambitious and they're going to have to take some more time to do it. Um, but it all it kind of varies. And I think that's how I, I framed it to the executive team and, you know, man, their managers also have a say. So that's also kind of the first level of, um, joining is that you have to get your manager's approval. Got it. So you sort of, you talk to a couple people that you already trusted. you got the management to say yes, to at least pilot it. And then what did the meetings or what's the frequency that you sort of have and then like so sort of like the like constructions to people what, what does that kind of look like um so we the meetings are once a quarter and our first year since we were piloting it it, it was kind of forming as it was going um but the first year the meetings were like this so it was a formal meeting once a quarter with everybody on this committee. And those would be more like updates, like, hey, how are you doing? What have you decided to work on? Um, once we get the uh, executive team approval, then we can continue to work on them. Um, and then every quarter, it would be an update. And then it wouldn't just be that, though, because we would have to meet with your sub partner to talk about logistics, right, of actually how you're going to do it, how will you split up the work. So there should be like sub meetings happening on the side, but the formal uh, meetings with everybody will happen once a quarter. And in addition to that, we also had um, one member on the executive team sit on as the liaison to the, uh, the executive team so that they can give us guidance on like, you know, that's probably too far out of our reach or this one's doable, let's, let's shoot for this one. So they kind of give, um, Chrissy Olendor, she gives us uh, guidance on that. And I think you mentioned at one point it was like 10 people are currently on the team. Is that right? right. So we have eight people on the team. And um, it, it, so, so most of the time it's the new folks that come in, they get really excited about it, which I love. Um, and I always like to tap on into, you know, new excitement and, and you know, new drive. And, but the, the downside to that, though, is sometimes that they haven't gotten used to their jobs yet. And so they have to pull back a little bit. And so at some point it was 10 and now we've gotten to eight. So I think that eight has been like the solid eight for, you know, the last couple of years. Okay. And so you have the team meeting, they, and they, in the meeting, like the quarterly, is it like, okay, so in the two folks who are in environment, what are you working on and what's your goals? Is that kind of how you run the? Right. Right. And so that's how I've been running the meeting the first year. And then now we're in into our third year. And I'm structuring a little bit differently now. Um, I think those updates are really, really great. And I think that they're um, important. But I also think that that can be done through um, a project management software, right? So we can all see what everyone's doing, where everyone is. 
So now I'm structuring a little bit differently that these meetings are now framed for brainstorming. And so our first meeting was to set goals, right? So we, I sent them the B Corp assessment and I told them, you know, you can use this as a guide, but don't feel like you have to only do things that are on the assessment. If you feel strongly that we need to improve in a certain area um, and it relates to your section, then, you know, let's talk about it and let's figure out how we need to, you know, make the improvements. So our first meeting was about setting goals um, and discussing them and brainstorming. And so our subsequent meetings will be tailored to helping them move forward. So for example, we're gonna have a meeting today on um, em employee engagement survey. And so the workforce team wanted to get the team together to brainstorm what types of questions do we want to ask year after year, right? To measure employee engagement. So those meetings will now be more tailored to actually exchanging ideas um, and brainstorming and collaborating rather than just um, monthly or quarterly updates. Is the workforce development team a separate team than the B Corp committee? Or is that? Um, so the workforce team is a subset of the B Corp committee. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the folks who have the workers section. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I think, and you know, for, the, for people who are watching this, the reason I would, I'm super excited about my model is because the way I was running E Corp teams that I was involved with as a external consultant, but also at my own company was more of um, as a single person who sort of sees the whole assessment, I'll bring like two or three questions that I think we could collectively move forward on, uh, you know, say volunteering policy but I was the one bringing it and then everyone would give their thoughts and opinions and then I would take it back and sort of move it forward and then bring it to the next meeting. And it was very, people, they still liked getting their thoughts and opinions and they appreciated having someone curate some of the questions, but at the same time, it, it goes very slowly and it's a lot of central command of the topics. Right. And so one of the reasons I really like my models, it sort of gives more self, governance to people to choose. Right, and I wanted to give them that autonomy, right? Because that was the point is engaging them, but also empowering them to know, like, if you don't think something is done well, and it could be done better, then come forth with your ideas, right? And we can move with this together. Um, it, it, if, it, if I had made it like a central command, then it would have felt like it would have felt all onto me. And I know that I can't do that. Um, and that it would end up being too much for me and I would be burned out. So I needed to know, um, or I needed to build a group where they felt empowered. Um, not that I wouldn't be involved, I would be heavily involved, but it's, it's their baby. I want them to take it and run with it. What about some of the challenges? You know, I think I posed this question to you a while back when I first heard about it. Like, what if, because I think you have a maximum amount of people mm -hmm. that you won't let there be more than eight or 10. Mm -hmm. And you also won't let, any executives sit on the team because right. you don't want them to shoot down ideas? Or, <laughs> you yeah. Like so um, one of the ways that any of this could ever be successful, and we're constantly working on this, is to be able to build trust within the team, um, to know that you can have an idea and no one's going to hold it against you later. Um, and so the conversations change depending on who shows up uh, so when we initially thought of how to structure the team, um, I felt really strongly that an executive team member couldn't actually hold a position on the committee because it would automatically put them in the position of authority and then the staff members would feel like their opinions wouldn't matter um, or that they would be too shy or too intimidated to say something. Um, and I wanted people to be able to feel empowered um, to come with new ideas and, and to work on developing them before it gets taken to a level where an executive team member can say yay or nay. Um, Chrissy's really great in that she's very open to ideas and she understands that some of these are just ideas and that they need to be worked through um, and thought out a little bit further before she says, or before the executive team members say no. 
And so she was really great for that position because I think she has that openness, um, but also has the inside knowledge of what's going on on the upper management level to help guide us through and to help think about, you know, these are some things that you should think about before we can actually move forward. And so she sits on it as a liaison, but not necessarily as someone who's specifically working on governance or, um, you know, environment or something like that. Right. And uh, I think the, the sort of hypothetical I had posed to you a while back was like, what if you're one of the eight people, but you're just not doing anything right. like a year? You're just on the team, but you just are like, I'm so busy. I can't. And you're taking a place on that team of somebody who wants to come in. Has right. That ever, has that ever happened? Yes, it does happen. And um, it's not for people not wanting to do something. I think that they do. I think that, you know, we as people tend to misgauge how much time or commitment we can commit to something. And so in those scenarios, like I'll have a private conversation with them and, and ask them how the workload is like in their primary jobs and how they feel about it and whether or not they still want to stay on. Because a lot of the times, um, sometimes it just feel bad. They know that they don't have the time for it, but they feel bad to pull out. And I just have conversations mm -hmm. saying it's okay. Like if you feel overwhelmed and you want to take a break or you want to just step down completely for the year, that's okay. Um, we'll be okay, right? We'll, we'll, may, we'll still make the improvements um, that we need. And so that usually kind of gives them an out if they wanted an out. Um, and if they don't want an out and they just are having a hard time then, um, and there is someone else that wants to join, then sometimes I will let them in and be like, this will be a third person on your team to help out um, and share the workload. So that everyone's involved, that they want to be involved, um, and the level that they can be involved in. And maybe last few questions on this is, what, what about if someone on your team wants to work on something that's borderline, like we want to have a more, um, like a different board of directors, and you're like, well, that's a little <laughs> bit outside of our, you know, so how do you really balance those, or we want to purchase 100% renewable energy credits, which would maybe cost a lot of money. How do you deal with those types of questions in the group? So we rarely get something that's totally outside of um, outside of what we can do. Um, I think that people there, even new people, have a gauge of what is possible, what isn't possible. But there are times where we mention something that would be difficult, um, and in those situations, it's just talking it through and it'll be like well have you thought about this have you thought about that how will you deal with this and um and i think that is a way to get to a point where you're on the same page right whether that means that i'm convinced that we can do it right and like yeah you know what now that i've thought it through i think this is possible and we can do it or it, they come to the point where they're like oh this is a lot more involved than i thought it was going to be and then maybe Maybe we start off small, we don't do the whole big thing, but we do this little part and we work our way there. And a lot of the times that's what happens, right? So um, we wanna go this big, but I'm like, okay, let, let's do this part and let's see how this goes. And then we'll, we'll move up to that point. And they're usually you know, pretty happy with that. Yeah, they know they can't change out the board of directors probably. Right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. What about, how does the team engage with the larger workforce around B Corp? You know, what if you went to the average employee at Clearinghouse, would they know that you're a B Corp or, you know, would they? Yeah, yeah um, so Clearinghouse is lucky in the sense that we're still pretty small. Um, so everyone that comes in new knows that we're a B Corp. That's part of um, Doug, our CEO, is kind of onboarding when he talks to each individual employee as they're new and he talks about the corporate culture, he talks about expectations he talks about the history of the company and he also talks about the fact that we're a b corp um, so i think everyone has a very basic understanding of what a b corp is and then um, when someone's new i usually go around and introduce myself and um, tell them what i do um, and then that usually leads to a conversation about b corps and then you know, if it's an appropriate time, I might tell them a little bit more about it or I tell them or invite them over saying, if you ever want to learn more about it, my office is always open and we can discuss it further. Um, and sometimes I'll just get a random email from someone saying, hey, I'm interested in joining. 
um, I said, I heard so-and-so talk about it. I think it's really cool or something like that. And so um, I, we don't formally tell managers or upper management, like you need to talk about B Corp and you need to encourage them to join the committee. But every year, like even if there were people that felt like they couldn't join, there's always been someone else to fill it. And I've never um, had been short, um, luckily, I guess, or, or whatever. For some reason, we were never really short on people that were interested in doing it. Got it. Great. And so if we move to the external stakeholder engagement piece, you know, one of the, and I know there's some, there's two initiatives that um, you're going to talk about, and maybe more generally, like, do you find that you get business, you know, because there's different, like, product companies you can put on your bottle if you're, like, you know, seventh generation or Ben and Jerry's or something, but service companies, it's, you know, we put it on our website and maybe our business cards. Do you, do you feel that externally people know, like, does it matter that you're a B Corp or do they just come to you? anyway because they know your sort of values more broadly or what's your general sense of like does B Corp matter to your external stakeholders? I think that if they are already knowledgeable on B Corps then they see it on our website and they see it on our materials and they're like wow like you guys are really great and that it's um, that stamp right that they know that that we've been vetted um, and that we're actually a good company to, you know through and through. Um, for folks that don't know about PP Corps yet, it's a little bit harder because um, they're coming to us mostly because they need financing, right? Because they can't go to a traditional bank. And so to them, that's not really what's important to them. But I think that it shines through when, you know, they deal with us and um, our relationship with them. And over time that they realize that you know, B Corp certification, it is a stamp, but, you know, in reality of what it really means is that you care about your stakeholders. Um, and I think that that's, you know, ultimately important to them. Awesome. And so the, the two initiatives, Be Bold Internship and the Ripple Initiative, can you talk about those? And so the Be Bold Internship Award Program was something that we formed, um, a couple of years ago. And it was a way for us to be a part of the B Corp movement beyond just certification. Uh, we thought it was really important that we reached out to the next generation so that they could start building better businesses as well. Um, and we wanted to empower the next generation. Um, so we created the Be Bold Internship Award Program and Be Bold stands for Building Bridges Through Outreach Leadership Development. Um, and we didn't just want to we were thinking about whether or not we should do it for college or for high school. And we knew that both were really important, but we wanted to start really, really early on. So we're like, let's start with high school students. And that's not necessarily something that's um, going to, um, the company isn't gonna necessarily benefit from it right away, right? So like with a college intern, you could get some free work out of that. Um, but with high school, their, their knowledge level is a little bit lower. They'll be juniors and seniors, but they don't have like the same experience as college students do. So it really was about them, giving them the experience. They can run your social media, maybe. Right. Yeah, that's true. They probably be really good at the social yeah. media, um, which they have. Um, and, uh, you know, they, we, we didn't just want to geared towards high school students, but like low income students, that's, that's true to our mission, right? Like we want to build up the low income community. And so we knew that like low income high school students didn't have the same resources as other higher income students. Um, so we were targeting them um, for this internship. And um, it's been really great. Like it's been, this will be our third year. And we just found out that our intern last year just got accepted to UCI. Um, so she's going to be going there and um, the internship while they were working they were getting paid and they also get a two thousand dollar scholarship when they go off to college um, so we're you know we wanted to give them the scholarship too because we wanted that to help them and not have them worry about money um, when they go off to college uh, so that was 
you know, the first way that we thought about how to, um, how to be a part of the movement um, with our external stakeholders. <clears throat> how is the B Corp, is it like part of the learning for the interns? Is like the B Corp assessment or how do you, how do you weave it into that piece? So when they first arrive, um, I give them the whole introduction of what a B Corp is and how the, you know, the Build Internship Award Program was kind of born. And um, the way that instructors, since they're high school students, they don't have a lot of knowledge in one specific area or even, or even can tell me what their, what department they'd be interested in, right? Um, I have them like float around. They get to touch a little bit of every single department. And our first year what we did was we had, I had been to every manager and we're like, what is something that an intern can do for you? Um, and sometimes I got departments that were really happy to teach and um, to give work out. And there were others that were like, there's really nothing in high school that you can do for us. So what we built instead was this um, uh, borrower experience. So we had the interns um, assume a borrower's identity and they floated through every department as if they were a borrower. So they got to experience what it was like to try to get a loan through us. And in doing that, they told us like, okay, well, this is where it kind of got like a little delayed or a little slow. So we could actually see how we were doing as a company, um, you know, with our borrowers. And so that I think gave them a really good taste of how everything kind of fits together, all the departments, how they all work together and how it all kind of flows. Um, and so this year, I think we're gonna do the same thing, except um, I'm being a little bit more, um, focused on the types of skills that they would be learning. So some of it would be like leadership skills, some of it would be like planning skills. I'm gonna have them plan out the day um, so that they have to get buy-in, they have to rally folks together, they have to plan out where we're gonna serve. Now wait, um, you have to describe B-Day for folks okay. who don't throw <laughs> so, their own B-Day. <laughs> right, so B-Day we do that every two years. We wanted to do it every year, but you know, work takes over and, and that doesn't always happen. But it'll be every two years we celebrate our certification. And so now it's landing on the years that we're recertifying. So hopefully this year we'll celebrate B-Day and an increased score. Um, and it's a day that we learn or relearn about B Corp certification, what that means. And then we do some kind of serve event um, with the entire staff. And then we have like some kind of lunch or, or something like that to celebrate. Um, so the interns will be planning that day. Um, before they, they, you know, take off for the summer. Nice. You can almost use them as like a, a B Corp, um, like a customer who's wanting to know about B Corps from the different departments and like ch ch test the departments to see if they know how <laughs> yeah. to describe it. Their knowledge base, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be funny. Yeah. Yeah, so what's the Ripple initiative then? So the Ripple initiative um, is something that we're going to launch. Um, and it was another way that we wanted to get our external stakeholders involved. So what it will be is that we'll, um, we've started a website with B Labs Help um, that's very specific to Clearinghouse, but it's the quick impact assessment. Uh, so it's a shorter version of the B impact assessment we take as to become certified. Um, it's still about like 30 minutes long probably to take it. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to blast it out to our partners, to our past borrowers, our current borrowers, um, and our, um, our board and committee members, and we're going to invite them to take the Quick Impact Assessment. Um, it's a way for them to quickly gauge where their company is compared to certified B Corps and compared to other companies um, to get them to start thinking about, like, what does it mean to, to build a better business? Um, and then uh, hopefully, you know, that'll start a ripple effect and they'll all start going to their suppliers or their vendors and say, hey, you should take this quick impact assessment and then it'll just keep going. Um, so that's the idea is that we would start off with who we deal with, right, with our vendors and suppliers um, and encourage them to take the quick impact assessment and then it'll keep going. Do you say that was a brand like a CDFI clearinghouse CDFI branded quick impact assessment, or um, it's still the same QIA that B Lab does? Yeah. But they what they do is that they actually create like a very specific website for you. So it's like 
you can name it something special if you want, but I think ours is like QIA slash com. So you can send that link to your, um, whoever you want to take it or who you want to encourage to take it. And they go through the, the same quick impact assessment as everybody else. Well, since uh, maybe in the last 10 minutes or so here, you know, we, you're thinking about recertifying this year. I'm curious how, when it's time to recertify, how do you, what is the, like when, how far in advance do you start thinking about it? And how do you, what's your process look like to start looking at score increases and. Sure. Like, so I started thinking about it. Well, I always kind of have it on my radar, but I really started thinking about it probably about two months in advance. And so, because it's like over 200 questions and I can't remember every single one of them, um, I go through the assessment myself and I mark which ones that um, I can't answer and that I need help from other folks, either our controller or our um, director of operations or HR. And um, I answer the ones that I can, I mark the ones that I can't, then I take the ones that I can, I put them in Excel sheets and I distribute them um, so that you know, it makes it easier for whoever I need information from to know what questions I'm looking for. And then once they've done their research and their backup information, they send it to me, I put that into the system. Um, so my general advice that I give folks who want to learn about the B Corp assessment, and it's a, it does feel like a very daunting process because it is a lot of questions, is um, not to be so like strict and hard on yourself. Think of these questions, they're not perfect questions, right? So I, I tell them to think about them broadly. Um, and this was my, you know, comment to B-Lab my first year is like, well, we're doing this, you know, in, in reality, but we just don't have a policy for it yet. And it doesn't quite seem fair. It seems more important that you're doing it rather than that it's written down. Um, and so I think they've adjusted the questions in that way, but having that thought in mind is like, you know, when it comes down to what is a question really asking us, right? Like, what are we really doing? And so to strictly follow exactly what it's asking you makes it very difficult to answer the questions. Um, you know, obviously be honest in all of your answers, but think to the root of the question, like what is it really getting at? Um, and it helps when you know a lot about what's going on in the company. Um, and then it also helps when you have people that, um, you know, that are willing to help and that are willing to work on like, you know, how do we, how do we do this? And so a lot of the questions like initially off the bat, you're like, no, we don't do that. And I'm like, well, let's think about it some more. Don't we do this? Doesn't that mean that we do that? And so it's, it's a lot about like just really being thoughtful in how you answer them. And do you, you know, do you say, um, to the executive team or to your B Corp team, I want to, we're at 140, our goal is to get 155, or how do you sort of plan out your So the score? goal, our, after our first year certification onto our second, my goal is like, I want to be on best for the world. And I don't even know what score we really have to be at. So for a long time, I was just writing off of like, I know that um, Beneficial State Bank is on that list. So I want to get to where they are. And them also being a CDFI, I'm like, we should be on that list, right? There's no reason why we're not on that list. Um, so it was more of by comparison of like, well, they got it, then let's try to aim for that. And it, it I never really calculated out like, if these were the five things that we were going to work on, I never really calculated out like, this is how much of an increase that we're going to get. Um, that was a part of starting the B Corp committee, but really it was about the improvements and not necessarily the, the, the assessment increase. Like that was a part of it, but um, the majority of it was, you know, to empower employees and to engage them um, and to make those improvements. So a part of the focus was on the score, but we didn't like, you know, tactfully say we we're going to get another 0.5 points if we do this. So. I sometimes do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like we have to do this bank because you get another 0.5. It's funny, but it's good. That's why it incentivizes us to try and improve our impact, right? Right, right. Exactly. It's an effective motivator. Right. Yeah. Um, 
what do you think, this is more of a broader question, but what do you think other B Corps should know that, you, that you've done at Clearinghouse that's really helped you maximize the value of your B Corp certification? Is there anything that comes to mind? Hmm, what should other B Corps know to maximize your certification? Um, I think what I want to say for Clearinghouse, and I think it's probably true for a lot of different companies, is that there are a lot of people working in these companies that are really motivated and you just have to seek them out um, and give them the opportunity. And I think that having conversations with people, whether that's at the water cooler, it doesn't have anything formal, um, you can really seek those people out and you can tap into them and their motivation. Um, and that would be my advice to B Corps. Like if you don't think you can start a whole committee, I bet you you can find at least one other person that's excited about it. And then you guys together can do something and start small, right? You don't always have to go big. You can start small and do something one step at a time. And as that starts to build and that excitement starts to build, then you're gonna get more people, more people, more people. Um, so don't be overwhelmed by changing the world today, right? Do what you can and what you have. Um, it all just kind of starts with talking. And do you have any, like, are, are there any resources? I know that Clearinghouse has some great stuff on your B Corp team, or is it the Be Bold internship or the B Corp team? I can't remember, but you have some good stuff on your website. Uh, we have both. Yeah. So um, the Be Bold internship uh, will have information for applicants to apply and, and what it means to be part of a B Corp. And then we also have a page um, dedicated to our B Corp team and what we do here in house um, to showcase, you know, that, you know, how awesome our staff is and like we do more than just uh, our primary jobs and how everyone truly, you know, inside themselves like want to do something. And what, what's the website again so folks can? Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, it's www.ccdfi.com. That's our, um, our general website and there's a link to the B Corp meeting. Great. One, one last question is, do you, do you have a document or a, a, like a policy that you give to new members of the B Corp team that like describes how the B Corp team works and like the structure of it? Or is that just all in your head? Yeah, so, so there is, it is kind of all in my head. Um, there is a formal um, document that describes how often we meet and how the subcommittees are split up. Um, so yes, that is something that I have and I'm welcome, you know, happy to share with, with you and other B Corps. That would be awesome because yeah. I think a lot of B Corps would love your model that you've yeah. done. So. Yeah, of course. Well, great. Thank you so much, Mai. I'll just uh, stop the recording here in a second, but just want to appreciate you for joining and sharing your insight on B Corps. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it.